Welcome to Frame 24, the show that watches the films that made cinema what it is today and then discusses them forever and ever and ever. Sound good? Stanley Kubrick created some of the most beautiful and iconic images in all of cinema. His careful, almost painterly compositions and smooth camera movements, his frequent use of symmetry in one-point perspectives, his perfectly balanced frames, these are the well-known trademarks of the Kubrick style. It's breathtaking. I mean, sometimes I'm moved near to tears by the perfection of these shots, and I don't think I'm alone in that. But if all we see in Kubrick's films is a series of pretty pictures, we're missing so much of his genius. More often than not, the visual elements of a shot exist not for their own sake, but to contribute to the narrative. Viewed from this perspective, it starts to be apparent that the main hallmark of his style was not balance and symmetry, but the opposite. Our brains evolved to respond positively to symmetrical images. The science involved is way above my pay grade, but suffice it to say, there's a classical beauty to these shots. A sense of orderliness. Things just feel right. Kubrick understood our hunger for this sense of balance, and what's more, he knew how to manipulate that need for his own narrative ends. Consider, for example, the contrast in 2001 A Space Odyssey between the beautiful yet asymmetrical landscapes of the Dawn of Man segments versus the perfect balance of the man-made locations of the future. Humankind has evolved, no longer at the mercy of a chaotic universe. They now reshape it to suit their desires, though admittedly not always perfectly. That old asymmetry still creeps through, particularly when mankind reverts to waterhole tribalism. Bingo! Yet as we see Dave's evolution continue forward to the next stage, the last of the asymmetries falls away, leaving us with a sense of perfect balance. Of course, sometimes the contrast is less intellectual. It hits us right in the gut. Ah! We're hurled into the disoriented subjectivity of the characters. Steady tripod shots and smooth dollies give way to staggering handhelds as the characters try to regain their footing or dive willingly into the abyss. Wide-angle lenses distort reality into non-Euclidean curves. Straight horizontal and vertical lines give way to oh-shit diagonals and Dutch angles. The world turns out not to be so square and solid after all. At other times, the imbalance is more subtle. The walls are square, the floors and ceilings level, but something just feels off. The elements of the frame are lopsided. Something needs to come along and fix it, fill in the gap, return it to equilibrium. This process can happen relatively quickly, like in the home invasion in A Clockwork Orange, or Lord Bullington's confrontation with Barry and Barry Lyndon. But in other shots, Hello? Kubrick makes us sweat it out. We know something's got to give. Someone or something has to fill that void. We watch in desperation, needing the shot to balance out while simultaneously dreading that it will. And that conflict within us only makes us squirm harder until the inevitable finally happens. And a dreadful balance is achieved. Kubrick sometimes even does this between shots. We're all familiar with the shot, reverse shot style of filming a conversation, where each participant is assigned a specific side of the frame. The two shots thus create a sense of equilibrium with one another. But what happens when the shots resist balancing? Take a look at this scene from The Shining. From the moment Jack swings open the bathroom door, we know something is off. Sure, a large part of it is probably the soundtrack, but I think the visuals are a factor too. Inside the otherwise bilaterally symmetrical bathroom, the half-closed curtain and half-glimpsed figure behind it just feel wrong. Then we cut to Jack, and unlike in a typical Kubrickian close-up, we can see that he's not centered in the frame. 
In fact, he's congruent with the woman in the tub. It's not until she comes toward him that she crosses the center line, offering a slight balance to his single, but it's still not enough. There's no symmetry between the two. We need balance. And as much as we want Jack to just blow this popsicle stand, at the same time, he has to stay and bring this shot into its proper equilibrium. By exploiting our desire for symmetry, Kubrick keeps us engaged in the narrative. His camera pulls us along, just as eager to see how the imagery will balance as we are to see the story come to a properly rounded whole. The result is a tapestry of perfectly interwoven cinematography and narrative that stands almost unparalleled in the world of film. That is the true genius of Stanley Kubrick. Good evening, friends, interwebians, and so forth. A couple of shout-outs this time around. I want to thank Mr. Evan B. Peters for a great video on Kubrick's use of diagonals in The Shining, which was a pretty big influence on my thinking for this one. I also wanted to give props to the fellas over at KubrickCast. It's an older podcast, I think from 2014 or 15, but anyway, it's worth listening to if you're interested in Kubrick's films. I didn't always agree with their analyses, but they always got me thinking. I'm going to include links to both sources below. As always, thank you for watching, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And I feel that any second something terrible is going to happen to me.